Hello, my friend. Welcome to another episode of the Back to Me podcast. And this week, we are talking healthy relationships. And you know, the most important thing in a healthy relationship is communication, because so many conflicts come from miscommunication and misunderstanding. I mean, just think of even historically how many things happen just because something was misunderstood. So have a listen. Let me know what you think. Share it with your friends. Subscribe. Do all those good things. And I will talk to you soon. Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hello, my friend. Welcome. I hope you're having an outstanding day. This is Heather, and this is the Back to Me podcast. And we get another awesome human being to talk to this week. And you already know that it's my favorite time to sit and talk with people and find out things that I never knew and blow my mind. And this week, we are talking with Andrea Richards from, I want to say, Fresh Start Meditation, but that's the meditation (laughs) thing. But it's Fresh Start Mediation. It is. It is. But tell me, I think meditation would be a good idea in mediation. What do you think? Well, you know, it can be. Meditation (laughs) is always good to help you, you know, center, bring you back down when things get emotional, for sure. Oh, my goodness. My brain can bounce all over the place. So it's up to you to help keep me on track. (laughs) So welcome, (laughs) Andrea. I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. And we know that there's... Their real life might happen in the middle of this podcast because there are little ones running around in the next yes. room. Yeah, there is. <laughs> so don't worry. Don't worry, everybody. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> and we are going to talk about, well, you know, I love healthy relationships. But before we go into that, how did you get into this world of mediation? This is the most interesting thing I find, how people get to where they are. Yeah, it's definitely a roundabout way. When So my education, my background is, is actually a business background. Uh, human resources was my major. Before I dived into my HR career, I actually worked as a legal assistant for a family lawyer. So I got to see that wonderful world of the legal side of conflict yes she did everything yeah (laughs) she did everything from like estate disputes which was really sad when you see kids fighting over estates oh my gosh dad passed to a lot of separation and divorce so i saw lots of that and then i moved into my hr career and hey hr is a lot of mediation just a different kind yeah so you know i did a lot of more obviously corporate type mediation, but the really uh, the place where a lot of people have problems at work, it usually stems from issues at home, right? right? Suddenly they're not performing well or things aren't going well. And it's because they're having maybe going through conflict at home or issues with their kids or their marriage is breaking up, all kinds of things like that. And so I found that that's where a lot of it stemmed from. And I took some time off to, you know, be mom and have kids. And um, yeah, I I met my current business partner through my husband. He met him through work and my husband has an accounting background. And so he met my business, our business partner, because he and I are in business together, my husband and I. And uh, he was like, oh, you got to meet this guy. And so I met him and we were like, this is a, this is music. This is magic together. So we decided to go into business together because I was like, I can help people without sending them to the courts, which are crazy expensive and take forever. And just it's such a painful process for people. Well, and when you go to court, it's, I feel like it's like the last resort of, it should be, this is like, we can't agree. We've tried everything and now we're going to go duke it out. Yeah. It's like, well, it's, 
it's the the expense alone, right? The average divorce, if you go to court, costs between thirty and sixty thousand dollars per person. What? Not total. That's per person. And I have a, a colleague who hers cost her one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Just oh my for gosh, person. is that like, U.S. dollars? It was Canadian. Okay, so it's not a hundred thousand U.S. <laughs> Still, but it could. It lot. still could be, though. Yeah. It still could be. I mean, oh, hello, hello in the back. Hi. Can you <laughs> <some> joke, please. <laughs> we have real life happening. <laughs> yep, that's my eight-year-old. <laughs> okay. So that's insane. That's insane how much a divorce can cost. Oh yeah. Just because yeah. two people who thought they would be together forever decided that they didn't want to be together forever. Oh yeah. And it's and you know it just it gets crazy. It just gets right. crazy. And and it's sad because, you know, if you can work it out yourself, that's awesome. Or if you can get someone like a mediator to help you work it out, um, then it just saves you so much time and money and heartache. Because at the end of the day, when you go to court, it becomes a you win or I win. This like yeah. competition thing. And someone always ends up being angry and bitter after. Always. Yes. And I've known just, many uh, an unhappy divorced person. Yeah. When I got divorced, yeah. we did it ourselves. And it probably cost me yeah. $500. <laughs> yeah. If you can do it yourself, that's the best. And I have some clients who are super amicable. They just don't know what to do. Right. So their divorces don't cost them very much because we're like, oh, hey, we can just like guide you. That's no problem. Yeah. You know? So they get to, without having to take those lawyer fees, they still get that <laughs> help of the mediator to work out any snags they have, but just guide them through the process. Right. Which is, I mean, yeah. you want to make sure that even when you're amicable, you want to make sure that you're doing the things you're supposed to yeah. do. Right. Yeah. And, and it was interesting. You said, what did you say? Something? Oh my God. I should write these things down because my brain <laughs> can't retain things. Apparently. Whew. It's like a wind blows through and it's gone. Um, oh, yes, I remember HR. So the mm -hmm. it is true. I mean, the things at home affect the things at work and the things at work Absolutely. affect the things at home. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And this is why. So I do. Um, I have the th I have this program I call the Thriving Life Method. And I say that's where you become the person you're supposed to be. And the become mm -hmm. stands for the six areas of wellness I like to talk about body, emotion, community, occupation, money, and engagement. And occupation is your profession, your vocation, whatever it is, even volunteer work. And when that's not working right, oh my gosh, it overflows into everything. Oh, and then when your community, your family, your relationships aren't working right, ugh, then it all goes to heck. So when did you do you find that it's, you get more out of you can help more people in your current role than you could in the, the HR role. Like you are kind of doing helping people in a similar way, I guess. Would you say that's is similar or? Uh, I would say it's some, it's the hard thing about HR is you're employed by the company. Right. So it's trying to balance the needs and desires of the company with, uh, with the needs and desires of the person, right? So trying to, to find that balance. Look, you look better already. <laughs> <laughs> we were and the reality is if there is a, um, if they come in too much conflict, it just unfortunately falls on the side of the company because they're the employer and they kind of have the power. They have most of the power. So I found that very limiting in HR. Whereas in mediation, the point is to help people maintain that power balance right. you know, and to just help guide them in the decision-making process. Cause I can't make anybody do anything. I don't have that power. I'm not a judge, I'm right. not an arbitrator. Right. So what I do is I help people just come to agreement, whether that's through helping them see reframing things so they can maybe see the other side a little differently or, you know, see their own needs a little differently. Because often we think, I need this, and this is how I get it. So I have to have that. Right. Right? Like, we use the orange story a lot with Fresh Start. And it's the orange story is that there's two people. And these two people need want the orange, the last orange in the fridge. 
And normally the third person would just say, oh, we'll just cut it in half. We cut it in half, you each get half the orange. And neither person's really happy because right. they get the whole orange. But we try to dive in deeper to find out, well, what do you need that orange for? Well, one person wants the zest to make a cake and the other one wants to eat the fruit. Perfect. You can both be 100% happy and have your need met if we just take that extra step right. and dive into the need. Which, unfortunately, courts don't do. No. And, because it's just dividing things up. Yeah. And lawyers, a lot of the time, don't take that extra step. Not because they're bad. That's not their job. Right. And that's and, all it is, is it's not their job. Their job is to say, okay, what do you want? I'll say, fight for it. This is something that, you know, lawyers yeah. find, but it's like, it's not in their best interest to <laughs> make it quick and easy. <laughs> no, no, it's really not. They don't make as much money. So it depends on your lawyer. Some of them are like, oh, because I won't lie. In mediation, sometimes people will give up things they're entitled to to come to agreement. But as long as their needs are being met, that's kind of what matters. Are you happy with the agreement? Are your needs being met? Right. Because the truth is what you're entitled to, if you go to court, you may not get anyway. Right. <laughs> it all depends on your judge. It's a crapshoot. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. And it's just like I've seen so much conflict and mistrust yeah. and, um, you know, he's lying and he's hiding this and they're doing that. And it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah. Where, so I always try to think back to the what was your relationship before it became this? Absolutely. At some point there was joy. Hopefully. Once upon like, a time. Once upon a time, you were well, generally you don't marry each other if you hate each other, right? Generally, or get into a relationship if you hate each other. Yeah, I like to think so, yeah. but like, and I, I like, I mourn a little bit for how far it can break down to the point where you are trying actively to, in some way, destroy them in in a courtroom setting. And talk yeah. about unhealthy relationships. What does that set you up for going forward? That that well, and um, then if there's children, how do you co-parent with this person who you've been plotting the downfall of? Right. How are you supposed to now effectively co-parent together? Yeah. And make decisions together. That's such a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> such a bummer. <laughs> it's like ah, oh. and I understand. Like sometimes stuff happens and. I know life, some people will disagree with me, but come on, everybody's human. Everybody screws up a little bit somewhere along 100%. the way. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we're inhuman. Like, You're right. I don't know anybody oh, who hasn't screwed up somewhere along the way. And mm -hmm. the grace of being okay with you and you like what you're saying, like get what you need instead of try to get everything and yeah. and see them still as a human being it's funny the orange story um we did that exercise in first year university oh, <laughs> where, we were, where we were learning about negotiation mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> i was the mediator ah, there you go <laughs> <laughs> trying to find out why these two people both had to have all these oranges <laughs> <laughs> oh my god to be 19 again <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. That feels like very long time ago now. <laughs> so when you're, so do you find that when you're working with people that, do you have ways, like, I know you're, you suggest different points of view, but um, do you ever talk to them about relate like ways to view relationships or are there ways to, you kind of help them to, how do you help them to reframe or, whew, cause it's hard when people are just have their heels oh, yeah. dug in, right? It is. And the big thing is helping them move off of, so digging to find out what the need is so that you can help them move off of the position. Because the position tends to be, for example, I have to have 75% of parenting time. I have to have it. So if you dig, like, what, what makes you feel you have to have it? What is the need? Why do you need that? Well, I need to be able to spend quality time with my kids. I want to make sure I have a strong relationship with my children. Okay, well, what are ways we can ensure that you have quality time and a strong relationship with them? You know, is it if dad has more parenting time or mom has more parenting time than that 25% phone calls, 
video chats? Do you get a date night? If we've got 50-50, you take the kids on the other person's week for a, a date night with one child so that you get, you know, some one-on-one -on -one time. Do you, it allows us, the beauty of mediation is it allows us to explore what are the different things that can meet that need. And then I don't make the choice. But because we've explored options, they are like, oh, okay, well, that'll still meet my need or that'll still meet my need. And so it's it's about helping people just shift a little from that like dug in position to an explore stage. And it's even not even just in divorces. Like imagine if people understood in all relationships. Yeah. Like I can like I can just think of relationships where there's there's discontent and crying you know conflict in relationships because the person who's unhappy has a need that's not being met but they don't know what it is well and we talk about that in actually we do a uh, a relationship course for for people that are still together and you can use it for business relationships, romantic relationships, or just loving ones. But it's about communicating, having difficult conversations and how you explore. Hold on, I can't hear you. <laughs> She's now louder than you. I know, that's great. Can mommy have a turn now? Thank you. Um, it's, it's about saying, okay, let's identify a conflict. What need wasn't being met? What was the reason you got upset? And so we, it helps when we work with clients to help them, because this is for when you're just starting to see those cracks in the relationship, right. to help pick a specific conflict, because people go overarching, and that can be really hard because it's really abstract. But if you go pick a specific argument you had, and you start digging down on that specific argument, then then that helps people better be able to identify, okay, why did that bother me? What right. was it? And we'll ask questions, you know, so what was it there? Okay, dig down a little deeper here and we just help them level by level, dig down deeper so they learn oh. to identify their need. It's almost like I'm therapy. Really it's almost like uh, therapy. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> no, I know it's not yes. therapy. <laughs> It's more targeted questions. Um, but yeah, if it gets to the point of therapy, I refer out because I'm not a therapist. <laughs> no. She is having such, she's a, she is now a oh, yeah. podcast star, right? She's like, she, uh, since I had her, because I had her in the summer of 2021. And so she's like all about Zoom because I did tons of Zoom meetings, networking meetings, you know, all kinds of things. And so she would be like, hey, <laughs> I'm a star. She is going to be an internet influencer. If we, if we <laughs> still have go. those when she's old enough, right? Well, I'm sure there will still be. We could move on. But I know, yeah, it's like coaching's not therapy either, right? Mediation's no, but not it therapy. feels like it. But it's therapeutic, though. It is therapeutic. And it is... Like if you've never, if, so I think about f conflicts and fights that people have, and sometimes I've been witness to them and I'll sit there and I'll think, th you know, it's interesting, like not just couples, but it's like, I know what you're upset about and I know what you're upset about, but neither of you are telling each other what that is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's weird when you stand in between them and you can't really necessarily tell them. <laughs> <laughs> because well, and we also with the emotional baggage like if if you might say this is why a mediator is great as a mediator if one of my clients rolls their eyes whatever <laughs> like i don't have an emotional attachment right but if the other person sees that person roll their eyes well the last time you did that this is what it meant and this is where it went and you've done that about six times before to me and this right There's and you always that. you always you always yeah and that's so common in any relationship because you have that history together right so you know we we suddenly attach it to all these other things when it may have nothing to do with that right and finding a way to communicate that is fair and 
being okay. I guess some people, I know I've talked to some people in the past, it's like some people don't feel it's okay to ask for what they need mm -hmm. until until the resentment has built up so high. It's like, how do you get back away from that? Yeah. So the fact that you have some, so you said you have a course for people. We do, yeah. Before they hit that phase. Yep. It's actually called having difficult conversations. Oh, how smart. Yeah, and I actually on our podcast, the first seven episodes are the seven lessons we do through that, uh, where we talk with mediators and explore each lesson in detail. Cool. Yeah. And your podcast, yeah. I'm looking the fresh start series. Yes. On right now, Spotify and Google, but stay tuned. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stay tuned. Apple, <laughs> it made me move to Apple. <laughs> now that I know how many Apple listeners there are out there. There's a lot of Apple listeners out there. Who knew mm -hmm. Apple was taking over the world? And I mean, I can think of situations where if conversations could, and there's so many, I feel like there's so many breakup songs. If only I had talked to you about, if only if I had told you this, then it wouldn't have happened. Um, so instead of regret and feeling like you kick yourself in the butt, I guess you got to move on. But yeah. why not have the conversation? It's true. And you know, it's funny because nobody likes conflict. Even as a mediator, I don't like conflict. I don't want to fight with my kids. I don't want to fight with my husband. But every relationship is going to have conflict. Not every relationship has to have contention and argument. There is a difference. We don't always see it, but there is a difference. A conflict just means two opposing forces or two needs that might come into conflict with each other, you know, and conflict helps us have stronger, deeper relationships as we work through it. Contention can become a problem. When you're fighting, then it becomes a problem. But nobody likes conflict, but if you don't deal with it, then exactly what you said, it builds up resentment. It just builds up till suddenly it explodes. Until it's too late and the bomb has exploded. 100%. Um, oh my God, I just thought of that. I think it was on TikTok, the cat, there's a cat video where he pulls the pin out of a grenade and then you see the ass blow up. <laughs> okay, that's how my mind works. Um, so, <laughs> it's, and I was thinking about like, conflict so the interesting thing about humans that i'm beginning to learn in my old age not that i'm old yet but um we, we avoid conflict we don't want conflict we don't want conflict but it's that friction in that um maybe an opposing viewpoint and something different than what we believe that helps yeah. us see grow see something new mm -hmm. um, have Absolutely. a conversation understand what our place is and how we feel about it and we go through this and this is the internet is bad for this um everybody's supposed to think the way i think mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no they're not <laughs> oh but some i've had some amazing conversations with people who we just sit on totally opposite ends of an issue but to just explore what is it that makes you feel this way about an issue. And even if my opinion never changes, I learn a lot and I can have more understanding and more compassion for where they're coming from. We're like, okay, we're not so different after all. Yeah. I mean, people's opinion wasn't formed just to disagree with you. No, right? absolutely not. And every relationship you have, someone's, no one's going to be ex think exactly the same as you all the time if they think about the same way as you do all the time anyway. And life would be so boring. Oh yeah, it really would. <laughs> and why would we even bother if everything was always the same and everybody looked the same and talked the same and acted the same. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so I've been, I, I mentioned this, I think last week, I, I've actually been listening to Abraham Hicks. Mm -hmm. And um, if nobody know, if you don't know who Abraham Hicks is, go Google him because he's too hard to explain. <laughs> but, right. no, I'm writing this down. I'm going to go look him up. So Esther, Hick, Esther Hicks is a woman who's been doing this for a long time and she channels the entity Abraham oh. from the universal energy. And he, he's very wise. I, I call him a he, but it's her. 
but it's him. Um, and it's like, they co it calls it contrast in relationships. You have contrast yeah. in relationships to help you grow and learn. So instead of being angry and um, getting divorced, unless it's the right, I mean, maybe it is the right thing to get divorced, but that contrast is there to help you see mm -hmm. something you haven't seen. And so that banging against it, yeah. just, and fighting against it, instead of, you don't have to change your opinion. Like you said, you can oh. still have a different opinion, but just sit mm -hmm. back and think about it. What's, what is the, what is it that I maybe haven't heard before that would be interesting to hear and add to my catalog yeah. of thoughts and ideas. And I remember I did a um, mastermind group with um, a gentleman, I think it was in 2020. It was, I know it was in the mid pandemic and he was basing his program on um, a type of gardening. It's like, uh, gone out of my head what the type of gardening it is <laughs> there it is you know i still blame i had a stroke in 2022 i blame the loss of some words with that there you go. i'm staying with that but um yeah, it's like nice. this very holistic point of way of gardening and one of the things that he made us do was to go and find someone whose opinion was we were vehemently opposed to and engage with maybe not a real person, maybe it was just like yeah. content or something to try and understand where that person was coming from. And oh my goodness, it was hard <laughs> because I picked something that just sends me into a rage because that's what I'm vehemently opposed to. And um, we came back to the meeting and I said, I really, really tried. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> So said, I'm working on it. I'll keep working on it to try and understand where they're coming from. But it still drives me crazy. But yeah. being able to find that that place in the middle like you do, where you can have a conversation mm -hmm. and still be in disagreement and still feel like you're not losing. I think part of healthy relationships is not feeling like you're competing with the person in your relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think you're right. I think it's, um, it's really hard because if you're competing, you're always trying to one up each other then, right? Because there is a winner and a loser instead of both people being a winner. And that's why, you know, we, we talk in mediation, we don't talk win lose. That's why we talk about needs being met. Because oh, right. in a relationship, whether it's a business relationship, or a personal one, or just another family, you know, a family one or a romantic, whatever, both of you win if both of your needs are being met, you both win, right? And so if you look at it from that perspective, it can really shift what it is that you're trying to do. And then it's not a competition. It's, oh, and the, you know what the funny thing is? Because people compete and we can be so competitive. If you are really nice to somebody, they will actually be nicer to you often because you can't be nicer than I am. And then you're actually competing in a good way. Like you show me a lot of care. So I have to show you more care because, because you can't be more caring than I am. Why do we do that? <laughs> now I know that our, our society is really built on competition. It is. Everything yeah. is so, and it's funny because my husband, we went to Africa on a safari, one of those big trucks. And so we went on a like low, it was like not low budget, but it's like we had to set up our own tents and take down our own tent. And there was another couple there, and I didn't know this was going on at first, that they would look at each other and then they would look and it was like they were having a competition to see who could get the tent up faster. <laughs> And of course, they're setting it up with their wives and their wives don't know they're competing. And I'm like, so one day I saw him go, ha, oh, we won. I'm like, what did we win? <laughs> right? Like, what, what, what did we win? There was, there was, I didn't know. I didn't know I was competing with setting up a tent. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, for me, it, in some ways it takes the fun out of it because there's too much pressure if I'm always competing. Yeah, and that said, true. 
He will also tell you that I'm super competitive when we play board games. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing is, I tried to explain, I'm not competing with the people I'm playing with. I'm just competing to see how smart I can be for myself. You know, it's those word game ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but now I have like this mantra that I repeat to him regularly. It's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> life isn't a competition i know it's called the human race but we're not actually in a competition let's just have fun yeah. like that's another abraham hicks thing it's like everything you are here to have joy and have fun and enjoy the pleasure of being in a human body while you're here so mm -hmm. why make it hard on yourself a hundred percent why it's just not oh you know life is hard with the things that you get hit by, it can just be hard just from circumstances. Like, let's not make it harder by putting more pressure on ourselves, you know, finding fault with each other. You know, Brene Brown has this really amazing video uh, on blame. You can look it up on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Brene Brown blame. And I, I had an epiphany watching it. <laughs> I watched it. She talks about blaming and how she, you know, she spilled her coffee on herself. Well, I wouldn't have spilled my coffee if I wasn't in a hurry and I was in a hurry because my husband didn't set the alarm and da 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 da. And they all got around to like blaming other people. But it, I mean, she just spilled her coffee. Like it, it happens, right? And I was like, I do that. Oh my gosh. I so do that in my personal <laughs> She created a whole story for you. But you do it in your head. Well, it's not my fault. Well, this person hadn't done this. And I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? That's terrible. I so do that. So even as a mediator, I have work to do, right? Like, well, I remember when I saw John Gray speak, who is the women are from Mars, men, no, men are, women are, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, Venus, some planet, I can't remember. That's and cool. Men are from I, Mars, women are from Venus. Yes, yeah. I saw him do a speech, a uh, talk, and I was killing myself because everything he said was right, spot on. Like, women keep score in their heads, and that's that blaming thing. It's like, I picked up a sock, there's a point. I picked up another sock, there's a point. And, you know, <laughs> and he's deducted a point for leaving a spoon on the counter. And he's. <laughs> I always. Um... I, I laugh because it actually reminds me of a chat when my before my husband and I got married uh, on like our first kind of official date or whatever we were walking. I won't get into it. Basically, we were supposed to be going to the zoo and we ended up walking around for an hour and a half trying to find the entrance to the zoo, <laughs> which, you know, that can make some people really angry. But we had such a great talk while we were walking around trying to find the entrance and and it was so awesome. It was so hilarious because he was telling me about this person he had listened to who talked about the differences between the way men think and the way women think. And for men, everything is in a box. There is the family box, the car box, the work box. And he's like, and we legitimately have a nothing box. So when men say they're thinking about nothing, there's actually a box they have taken down and opened and there is nothing in it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, awesome. There's no car. There's no family. There's nothing in it. Because that's that's the way men are. And when they're done thinking about whatever the topic is, they close the lid and they put the box away. But women, it's like, I think about the car and the car leads to my job and the job leads to home and that leads to the kids and then the kids in school. And it's all connected. And I was like, mm, that's so legitimate. I think I remember... <laughs> Was were we talking about this one? I said it's like you know a man has a wallet and a woman has a purse. <laughs> the, yes. wallet, the wallet, everything has a slot. The purse, everything is just choked in. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, that's another beautiful example right? of the difference in the way we think. It's so organize true. organize your purse, friends, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then at the end, when we finally found the entrance, he was like, "Thank you for not getting mad." <laughs> The entrance to the zoo, especially because we ended up realizing we had like walked right past it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious! And I was like, you know what? I have so enjoyed this conversation of learning about you know each other and how you think, and and it's and just shifting a perspective of rather than get angry and blame and say, well, 
we should have known where the entrance was. Right. It was just gave us an opportunity to get to know each other in a different way. And Imagine if you found yeah. the entrance, you wouldn't have had that conversation. Well, exactly. We probably wouldn't have. Right. That's yeah. so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. So healthy relationships. Right. And they can find you if they want to find your course and your podcast yeah. and everything. It's on your website. It is. Yes. On uh, www.freshstartmediation.ca. Not meditation. Mediation. Not meditation. Mediation. I believe there is a fresh start meditation. So that'll take you to the wrong spot. Wrong spot. Mediation. And don't worry because it will be in the show notes for you. And we, it will be hopefully clickable. And you can just go right over to it in case you type too fast and spell it wrong. Um, thank you so much, Andrea, for talking thank relationships you. with me. Because all businesses, everything in life is a relationship. It's right? all about so. it. That's what it's all about. Now, before we go, do you Mm -hmm. have a final word of wisdom for our friends out in podcast land? My, if, if nothing else, whenever you get into, whether it's a conflict or even just a regular conversation, repeat back to other people what they say, not word for word, but say, so this is what I heard. Most conflict comes from just misunderstanding each other. Wow, that's good. Is that, did we call that reflective listening? Rephrasing. Rephrasing. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. So yeah. don't assume you understood what they meant. Check exactly. and see. That's Check. excellent. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for hanging out with me. Say hi to the kids. I will as they came <laughs> in and out. Yes. And have an awesome day. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Bye-bye. Take care, friends in podcast land. I will see you next time. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like, like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help. You can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com. If you want more of this awesome content, you can follow me on Instagram, Heather Stewart Coaching. You can follow me on Facebook, Prosperity Flow Coaching. And I have a personal request. I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts. And if you could give me a review, hopefully a good one, (laughs) if you could share, if you could send this out into the world, I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend.